Hello, and welcome to another episode of TSF Reviews. I'm joined here today by Amr, and we will be taking on uh, Yasuke, an anime about the Black Samurai, who, if you can see in the background of Amr's, is already sitting up on the chair. Ah, yes. He's the Black Samurai. <laughs> yep. <laughs> He's and licking my before... headphones. Okay, no. Puro, puro. Get down. Anyways, and continue before on. this looks like too much of a weave fest, I will take off my hat. <laughs> <laughs> I just want to say he looks like a peasant soldier. Look at this. This peasant <laughs> with his two wannabe wooden swords. I am a peasant. You know, it's what I can afford. <laughs> Technically, I am as well. I didn't. I haven't been given my samurai title yet. <laughs> Okay, I have to fight the Black Samurai first. Okay, Black Samurai is gone. Let's continue, Mubarak. Because you have a lot of explaining to do. Yes, I do. But uh, you let me know first what you thought about this show. Okay. There's so much to say that I don't think I'm going to be able to say all of it in the limited time that we have. But all I will say in the beginning is the show is amazing. Not just because it's black samurai and I'm a weeb for samurai stuff. All right. It's also because this show reminds me of a more retro style of uh, anime. Something like Cowboy Bebop and what was the other one? Oh my God, I forgot. But like the Cowboy Bebop era, that era. I'll go on in detail about this, but just overall, the look and feel of the anime, the animation style, it kind of fits that, especially the music. And that's all aside from the fact that this is about the Black Samurai. And I've been waiting for a show about the Black Samurai because uh, it's a very interesting legend. I'll say again, it's a legend. It's not a historically like verified story. We, there are so many details mm. that we do not know. All we know that it was definitely true. There was someone, but that's all that we can say for sure. But yeah, as for rating, I've been debating this inside my head and I will say this, this rating is still subject to change because I will watch the show over again just so that I can get another more detailed feel at it because this was my first watching. But I'll give it an 8 out of 10. I recommend this show. If you're into anime, and especially you're into samurai stuff, I don't know, then this is a show that you can definitely go for. So now it's time for your rating, Mubarak. Okay. Um, I did not enjoy the show that much, unfortunately. Uh, I didn't even watch the first trailer. I just read the title. I, I knew of this com- when it was going to come out. I knew it was going to be about the mm-hmm. legendary black samurai from, you know, from half verified uh, history. Let's call it half verified because of all the facts that have gone missing. I was excited for representation, for justice to his um, background his you know ethnicity and everything like that i did not get most of that Mm -hmm. in this show unfortunately Mm -hmm. but let me talk about the pros first first off the score so that's some good music right there you know it fit in every scene it fit there wasn't a single scene that felt out of place uh, score wise also the animation i really like this animation it was um I'm very partial towards this sort of animation, the Western style, uh, you know, over the traditional Japanese style. But this felt like a, a good uh, middle ground. I, is, is that, can I say that? Is it, it fair to say middle ground? It definitely this... felt like it does justice to that mm. style of animation. And yes, yeah, I, I understand your point. This is what I was trying to say early on, which I will also speak of on in my own words, but go on. Go on. Yeah. Okay. Let me go down to the cons. First of all, you call this Yasuke, but 
the story was about Yasan. Let's be honest. The Yasuke part was only taken care of in flashbacks. Also, by the way, sorry for spoilers, but you know, we we do this. You guys should know by now. We are very spoiler heavy. If you're yeah. watching a review, then it's obvious you're expecting spoilers, but go on. <laughs> yeah. Um, but this story was about Yasan. The Yasuke parts were taken care of in flashbacks, but for it, it did not vibe well with me. This show should have been about Yasuke and not Yasan. Second of all, if we were going with historical, you know, this is, of course, legend, you know, unverified legend and half truths and all that. If we are going towards that route, why is there magic and mechs and all sort of werewolf lady and it just <laughs> from Russia. <laughs> But like it doesn't it just, why why is that even happening why is it there and then you have the guy from the catholic church saying that he wants to take when did that happen in japan i mean i wasn't there but i'm assuming it never happened okay, okay. stuff like that hurts me personally the only also as far as representation, the only blackness they brought into this was calling him slave the whole time. I mean, they, sh- they showed his journey, but it wasn't like properly shown. They showed how he became, uh, you know, how he came into the care of Oda uh, uh, Nobunaga. Mm-hmm. They showed him already a fully fledged samurai. They showed him fighting for him, Ob- uh, Nobunaga. And then all of a sudden they're showing us that now he's, this is 20 years later and that's it. Nobunaga is only in the past in flashbacks. This is what I feel should have happened this season. They should have started with Nobunaga initially distrustful of this uh, servant, this slave when he comes over. And they should have shown his relationship with Nobunaga, how they became Lord and uh, what is the title that I'm looking for here? Lord and servant or Lord and samurai to be more honest. Lord and samurai. Let's let's yeah, that's what they should have shown. This first season should have taken care of that bond. Then it would have had more weight when Yasuke finally had to do the honorable um Seppuku, I don't know what's the head slicing part called, but mm, aided him. In yeah, that's seppuku. basically being a second, but okay. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, mm. that sh- it should have been, you know, taken care of this way. It starts off first episode. He's cut no- Nobunaga's head off and that's it. He's now Ronin. This is 20 years later. It, mm-hmm. it really disconnected me from the very first second. I'm really sorry to say. Netflix teased this in a way that they were like black samurai, you know, everyone was excited, but at the end of the day, it was black Ronin. Sadly, I'm, I'm going to say that the samurai okay. part was very sketched over, you know, sketched over. Sadly. Okay. Okay. Uh, all right, Amr, you tell me what you loved about this and why you are Definitely. holding your sword like that. <laughs> So let me let me get into all of that. So you do make a fair bit of points. You did say initially when we were just chatting, you said that you had two major points. So I'm guessing yes. one is that why the heck are there mechs and a Russian lady? And magic. And magic. All right. Uh, that was number one point. I did cringe when he uh, Nobunaga was sort of like, you know, telling this backstory of when the Mongols invaded, they brought mechs and I was like, okay. <laughs> sure, so, okay, hold up, hold up. So you see, here's the thing. Amir, I'm going to interrupt you here. Disclaimer. I played Ghost of Tsushima. Okay. I knew, I know the Mongols. Don't hurt me. Mechs. I haven't played it yet. <laughs> I will Mongols bring the not- sword. I will bring the sword to Gujramala and I will slay you. No, but you know that there are no mechs in Ghost of Tsushima, okay? okay That's look, a given. Look, I'm pretty sure Best that there were actually no mechs at all. All right. Exactly. But and I know the Mongols are any mechs. But Mubarak, people like giant robots. Have you forgot the Megas XLR uh, intro song? 
Jets I love, take giant robots. <laughs> I love mechs, by the way. Okay. But mechs and samurais do not mix. They do. Just saying. But mm, anyways, okay. but like, okay, here's the, here's, the, here's, the, here's the thing. Moving on. Yeah. For, let, me, yeah. let me first uh, get into the 8 by 10 score. Let me just say that I agree with Mubarak's points. I would have loved, like, I, I'm going to go back to your major point, the more major point, which is the actual story of the Black Samurai. Yes. I would have loved to see a story of the actual Black Samurai. I am kind of like uh, remorseful that instead of like, uh, they show flashbacks, all right? Flashbacks, that's not a lot of time or screen time mm-hmm. given to it. The story of Yasuke is uh, quite interesting. We know for a fact, since you probably said you don't know why the Catholic Church is there. It's there because the Portuguese came to Japan in 1571 or I don't know, something like that. All right. They did arrive in Japan and they brought guns with them. They brought two things. They brought gunpowder and they brought religion. The power of Jesus Christ and Christianity was in Japan and to a point that a lot of Japanese people at one stage were Christian and not just Japanese peasant people. I'm talking about lords as well. There are some clans that were part of all of this Sengoku Jedi period that were known for being Christian clans, very pro-Christian clans. And guess who one of those warlords were who were very pro-Christian and that was Oda Nobunaga. He was very pro-Western, pro-Western in the sense that when he saw the guns going off, boom, boom, he was like, yep, I want those. And uh, this is sort of a misconception, like uh, in, even in the anime, they have this thing going that, um, you know, Mitsuhide is uh, angry at Nobunaga because he does not respect the old ways and he wants to bring in all of these foreigners into the army and the black samurai as well. And he is a slave. Technically, I think that is all uh, either more dramatized for the story because according to the legend of Yasuke that I have read, Mitsuhide did actually not exactly agree with Yasuke being there, but it was more along the lines of he did not agree with Nobunaga's bloodlust. Nobunaga was a bloodthirsty warlord. He killed a lot of people. He at one point burned an entire castle full of people, women and children inside, and they he massacred that castle. Uh, he really did a number on Buddhist uh, revolutionaries, the Iko Iki and a bunch of other revolutionaries groups. I, I'm not, I don't remember all of them right now, but uh, this one thing is the main reason Mitsuhide was disincensitized by his Lord Nobunaga was because of the fact that he was this guy who is very bloodthirsty and he has to get rid of him plus there's also personal ambition at stake but instead they portray this story more as a he does not agree with nobunaga because it's the old ways the old ways of the samurai are war and the way of the future is a united japan which is peaceful which is kind of ironic because technically they butcher a lot of people to unite japan or the three unifiers of japan but like uh like i said i will go on on about this I would have wanted to see the original story because the story of Yasuke is very, very inspiring. Um, There are some liberties taken in this uh, TV show, but the flashbacks they show, and this is the point that I will defend, they are accurate to the legend to a point that I was so happy they showed the moments where Nobunaga and Yasuke meet. Now, what the legend says is like um, Yasuke arrives in Kyoto following his Jesuit uh, master. Jesuit is a missionary monk from Portugal. It was kind of a missionary order, right? So mm-hmm. Catholicism was in Japan at that time. And this guy goes up to Kyoto to, I don't know, do stuff, Christianity spreading stuff, I don't know. And he takes his uh, African slave with him. This African slave is of the Yao people. And I'm so happy that they actually do that because the Yao people are an actual tribe 
from East Africa. And that is where, historically speaking, historians suppose that is where he came from, the actual real Yasuke. He's called Yasuke because the legend says the Japanese were unable to pronounce his real name. And they actually show that moment in the... Yeah. They, they do that. He pronounces his name and everybody is staring like, what? So they just give him a name Yasuke because according to legend, that name was e- more Japanese and easier for the Japanese to pronounce. And that is the only name on record that we have. So the moment where they're washing him because they think he has dyed his skin is also part of the legend because the Japanese had never seen an African man before. To them, this was actually a Portuguese man who had painted himself. So Nobunaga would, uh, what would happen originally is the samurai where the Jesuit was staying in a inn or a hotel or a restaurant or whatever. Suddenly there would be a fanfare of Tokyo citizens trying to get into that place. And they would batter down the door just so that they can take a look at this really tall behemoth of a man because he is from Africa. And the average height of Japanese people at that time was relatively short. short, All right. This man literally towered above them by a foot and he had black skin. He became a celebrity. And Nobunaga, when he heard of this, he asked that, you know, bring this person to me. I want to take a look for myself. And when they met, they had a conversation. And during that conversation, Nobunaga was very impressed by this man's intelligence and his integrity of character, which is why he's like, I want this man to serve me. And that is how he becomes a samurai. First thing that Nobunaga orders is that his skin be washed and the paint washed from him. And later on, when they would do that, they would realize that that isn't paint. That is mm-hmm. his actual skin because the Japanese had never seen a black human being before. This yep. is like 15th century or 16th century. Well, so I know this legend and uh, I've been a fanboy of this for a long while because uh, reading historical stories and actual historical accounts and the variety of them that exist is kind of a interest of mine. I am happy that even in the flashbacks, they do show that. There isn't a lot to show, but at the same time, I would say that maybe they choose the flashback idea of uh, the flashback way of showing the previous story of Yasupe, where he comes from and all that, because there isn't Mm -hmm. a lot to go on. Like, uh, although I would have loved, it would have been very inspiring. At the same time, if they go that route, I don't particularly mind that if you if you can get what I mean. Now, here's the thing. Um, I'm going to skip all these other parts, like uh, a lot of the stuff that they show, it kind of reflects the same uh, original story of Yasuke and overall the historical accounts of uh, Nobunaga and Akechi Mitsuhide and how the betrayal happens and Nobunaga committing suicide and then Nobunaga's son uh, his, him being besieged in his castle and Yasuke being there with him, this actually is part of the entire legend. This is how it happened. And they show that all, even to the point they get the dates accurate, which is incredible for me because um, I just like that. There has to be a good balance between historical accuracy and entertainment. If you try to dramatize something too much, then you start taking liberties where you should not. But at the same time, if you try to be too accurate, it's going to be boring for the average user. For example, uh, I'd say you, someone who has not studied samurai history that much or someone who has absolutely never done that. Maybe like some of our other crew members like Samin, Asad, I don't know how deep into samurai stuff they are. So... Let's this just assume thing. that we've seen The Last Samurai and Samurai Jack. I guess those are the first two samurai yeah, like, entertainment uh, I, that I comes suppose, off the top I of my suppose, head. I suppose that's, like, that's what I expect the average person mm-hmm. to have seen. So I do not yeah. expect the average person to be watching this story about uh, black samurai coming from the East and all of that. I mean, it is inspiring. 
and they will have some good takeaways from that. But at the same time, there are some good takeaways from this story as well. It isn't like that they do not show it at all or that mm-hmm. they take liberties with Yasuke's story. Although there is that one other black guy, I, I forgot his name. There, his name is only spoken once. The priest. Yeah, the, the priest, priest. The shaman. Uh, uh- Abuja, Abuja, I think. Abuja, yeah, Abuja. like it was. His entire name is said once in the entire show, yeah. which is weird. But like, Achoja, Achoja. Like, here's the Actually, thing. Actually, no, no, those, wait, wait, those wait, no, four I'm, characters, I'm those four characters, I do like. Them. I'm reading it wrong. It says Achoja over here, but um, I think that is yeah. that is that was the name. Yeah, I yeah. because I just watched it. Like, you see those four characters that they were the liberty over here. The magic was the liberty and the robots. I don't Five particularly, characters. yeah, I don't particularly the girl mind, as well. I don't particularly mind liberties being taken, but I believe this that if, if I, if I had, if I had just one thing they could have removed, please get rid of the mechs, <laughs> not giant robots. I'll, I'll take magic mm. any day. All right. Japanese culture yeah. is full of magic and spirits and all that. Just take away the dang robots. <laughs> I remember yeah. what, I remember what they did with the seven samurai. TV show, the animated one. <laughs> yeah, just take away Which the robots, all right? Mm. Well, let me just tell you, it's like based on Akira Kurosawa's legendary movie, The Seven Samurai, which is based on old feudal, feudal Japan, and it does not have any of that. It's just seven samurai defending a village against bandits. In the animated TV show, it's um, seven samurai defending a village against bandits which are made up of giant robots instead of <laughs> warrior samurai why are they giant robots what's 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 your fascination with giant robots so yeah like uh, just get rid of the giant robots if i had to be nitpicky but at the same time i do not want much changed in the tv show i'd say just get rid of the giant robots that is the reason why instead of saying that this is a 9 out of 10 I gave it an 8 out of 10 when we were talking, all right? I decided that I don't like that. The second reason is I agree with your point, which is why I deduce one more point, uh, that I would have preferred them showing the actual historical account of Yasuke as they had initially initially Mm. teased. Because, yeah, there are flashbacks, and those flashbacks are indeed accurate to the original legend, which I I really appreciate. But still, give me the but action. At the end, yeah, yeah, don't give at me the flashbacks. end of the day, it's flashbacks. Exactly. Yeah, don't give me flashbacks. I would have preferred that to be the like, story, the main if, story. If, if they really wanted to give me at least four episodes in the beginning, all right? Make it a 10-episode mm. season. If it's a 10-episode season, I'm not sure exactly how much it should have been. But like the first four episodes, four episodes out of 10 should have been about Yasuke's original story. Okay, fine. We get to the part where Nobunaga is scared. I kind of expected that to happen when there was a Nobunaga. I already knew that he is going to die. And that is when yep. we're going to get into it. Mm. But we're already into it right at the beginning. And uh, that is also where the timeline takes an incredible detour because three years after Mitsuhide would betray Nobunaga, Nobunaga's own loyal general, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, would come and beat his ass. And then he would become... Well, I can't call him a shogun because he does not become a shogun. He is not a samurai. The Toyotomi Hideyoshi instead becomes, what, do, what is it called again? A sort of a prime minister. There, it, 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 he has a specific title to himself because he came from a peasant background. So he could not become shogun. Instead, he becomes oh. something like a prime minister. A shogun is like Let's a military dictator. But like the thing, my point that I'm trying to get at is it was three years. After Mitsuhide uh, had betrayed Nobunaga and he got defeated within three years. I may be wrong about the three years, but I know for a fact that it was either three or less than that. Over here, we have 20 years into the future. Mitsuhide is still out and about doing Chilling. stuff. Yeah, like um, for some evil warlord. Okay, I don't mind that. But like, where the hell are Nobunaga's other generals? Where is Tokugawa Ieyasu? Where is Toyotomi Hideyoshi? Where is his son? Where's his son? Nobunaga's his son, son. Is, Nobunaga's son is killed. Okay, like historically, this is what happens. Nobunaga had ordered Toyotomi Hideyoshi to go on and fight a war in the south, all right? Against the Mori clan. I'm not, yeah, I think it was against the Mori clan. And he was doing that, all right? There was a military campaign already going on. 
he was going there with another army with Mitsuhide. So what he does, he orders Mitsuhide to proceed on ahead and he decides to go to the temple in Kyoto. I forgot the name and uh, the name of the temple. And he goes there with a few bodyguards. Nobody is supposed to know where he is. Only Mitsuhide does. And that is when Mitsuhide betrays him because none of his closest uh, loyal generals, the other five or whatever number of generals he had, were with him at that time, except maybe Tokugawa Iyas, who was a bit far back, and uh, Toyotomi Hideyoshi, who was his most loyal general and most capable general. He was way in the south doing a campaign against the Mori clan. And that is why he betrayed him at that point. That was the moment he had only a few bodyguards with him. There's like even a legend of how he did it. He rode up on a horse outside the temple and he uh, stopped his men and he said, men, Okay, the sword is long. I'm sorry, Kuro, for scaring you. The enemy isn't there. We will attack him. And that's how Nobunaga's own men attack the temple in which he was staying with just a few bodyguards. And according to legend, one of those bodyguards and the people with him were Yasuke. Yasuke would escape from that after Nobunaga commits suicide. And he would go to the Ezuchi castle. I forgot the castle, the home castle of Nobunaga. But that is where Nobutada is, his son. So yes. right after getting rid of Nobunaga, uh, Mitsuhide would immediately proceed to besiege that home castle of Nobunaga, the main castle of where his family comes from. And uh, obviously the siege would go bad because Mitsuhide has a huge army and they only have a few soldiers to defend. And Nobunaga's son is also, well, killed? No, he's not killed. He just commits seppuku because they shouldn't be captured. Mm -hmm. So... This is shown in the TV show. There is mention of that. You were unable to protect his son even. There's like a dialogue that happens. Yeah, in a dialogue that happens, yeah, like, but they didn't show it per se. Yeah, like uh, they didn't show any of that. I'm saying that uh, it could have been a wonderful story. They could have shown all of that in just four seasons, uh, four episodes, not four seasons. Yep. Uh, they could have done that. But like, see, here's they the thing. They should have done that. I say they could have but it's not bad. You say they should have, and that is our disagreement, but like, let's leave it at that. Agreed. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Agreed. So like, um, I don't particularly mind that overall, if anyone gets into the show, they will enjoy it. If you're not Vibus like us, you will enjoy it. If you're not samurai fanboys like me, you will enjoy it. Even if you're samurai fanboys, enjoy it. Don't worry. It, history is not 100% accurate. History is not exact science. As I like to say mm -hmm. now, there are some things that I have left to say, and I will get into that. Um, there are, well, it's mostly about the music and the animations and about the music. That is where I kind of want to talk about it a little bit because the music was fantastic. Dude. Mm -hmm. The blend of Japanese instruments with this retro trance music in the background. Did you feel that? The retro electronic, trans, yes. yeah, the electronic music, like this retro electronic music, it mm -hmm. kind of gave me this vibe, uh, this 90s vibe and early 2000s vibe of the era of Cowboy Bebop and Firefly TV series or, well, the animes from that era. The, the music felt so much like that and I absolutely loved it. And then I tried, when I was listening in on the music, I decided to focus on the animation. Is it like that as well? And I kind of remembered, I cannot believe that I can't remember the name of that TV show, which is like from the same creators of Cowboy Bebop, but it's based on in feudal Japan with two samurais and this one girl accompanying them. I forgot the name. Can you remember? I have not seen that anime, sadly. Um, while you are searching for that, um, the only anime I can think of comparing this to is Afro Sam Samurai also oh. available on netflix i watched afro Sam samurai and while that was pure fantasy it made sense it had a journey of a guy who if you've watched afro Sam samurai you will you'll know what I'm, I'm talking about it has the journey it has how he went from where he was to what he became eventually it made sense all of it Maybe I'm comparing this show, Yasuke, to Afro Samurai because, you know, they're both about black men in Japan or mm -hmm. wherever it is. It's their samurai 
they have katanas they're badass cutting around people and you know you get that epic blood spray and you know all that maybe i'm comparing it too much to be this way about it that show was meant to be fantasy this show should have been historical is just what i have to say did you find the show uh no i did not but you know what i'm going to leave it to the audience because i'm pretty sure right. they know which one i'm talking about it's just like cowboy bebop but Let like us know. my point is my point is um the music and uh, all of that is incredibly fantastic you've already spoken about that so i'm not going to get into a lot of detail mm-hmm. about that there are moments that i particularly like for example yasuke wiping his the blood off his blade in one scene with a cloth yep i know i'm being very picky over here but i absolutely love that because let me tell you um initially what i was trying to get at is a lot of our current samurai culture as we like to call it even in japan the current uh samurai traditions or whatever you want to call them even kenjutsu and all of these things they are recent inventions when i say recent i'm talking about 200 years ago in the era in, in the edo period in japan as they uh, call it that yeah. is the period after the wars and that is like a pax japana period like i take that word from pax romana it just means it's an era of peace and in that period there are no more warriors to a point that the early tokugawa shoguns they banned weapons peasants cannot carry weapons that isn't because samurai is amazing and when western people would actually make a push into being in japan in the 18th century we would have all those trading companies on all that and uh, then japan would open up their borders and allow trade and blah 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 we all know the meiji restoration period all right but yeah pe- the western people and the western people uh, visitors going there foreigners would observe this culture where samurai have titles and they have honor and they have these big stories and peasants cannot be samurai it wasn't always like that it the mm-hmm. lines were very very blurred back then anyone could be a samurai i literally told one story about a peasant warlord who was nobunaga's best general he was a ashigaru in his army and he impressed nobunaga with his brain and nobunaga really respected that so he uh, promoted him in rank to a point where he at one point became a very loyal general which makes sense because the oda weren't exactly a wealthy clan they had to rely on peasant soldiers a lot so nobunaga would drill them uh, to be regular soldiers so that they can fight wars against other more powerful clans like the imagawa at that time and stuff like that and of course nobunaga would also be very very open to firearms not just nobunaga but literally mm-hmm. everyone would be if there wasn't any talk about oh we are not going to use guns because guns are dishonorable and they're foreign and blah 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 no this is samurai didn't care they saw an advantage in guns and they actually wanted guns to a point that guns were mass produced in japan they are called tanegashima teppo because there is a city or a state a place in japan called tanegashima all right mm-hmm. that is where they were mass produced they mass produced uh, arquebus type guns and they regularly trained soldiers over there to be able to operate them like proper musketeers like it's kind of weird calling them musketeers because they were more like uh, arquebuses which is i've heard it's different but mm-hmm. see this is the thing this is the culture that we're coming out of the history back then was very very uninteresting and brutal and crude um, I, I would disagree. Everything you've just told me right now about Nobunaga and all this, I would, I would have loved to see an anime about this. I would have would loved have to see. Here's, here's the thing now. Here's the thing that I'm trying to get at. You would have loved to see an anime of Nobunaga, but liberties have to be taken in order to make it interesting. Now, here's the thing. Um, we've already agreed that we kind of agree on those points. We, I yes. want to see the original story of uh, Yasuke. Yasuke as well. Mhm. I don't mind the magic and all of that in there. Okay. I 
just want the original story if that makes sense I sure get keep and the that... magic let keep the magic keep the uh, the same uh, conflicts in there uh, okay there is a foreigner he's a servant obviously uh, i know per legend mitsuhide wasn't exactly like you know fond of yasuke this foreigner who is in nobunaga's but then again he didn't exactly agree with nobunaga at all and it kind of when you don't agree with one thing you don't agree with a lot of other things from someone yeah. this is kind of yeah. like personality based all right this is psychology and uh, he already was disensensitized with nobunaga mm-hmm. one prime reason uh, which i've already mentioned historians believe it's because nobunaga was a bloodthirsty person he really liked yeah. war and to go to war and uh, he massacred a lot of people and mm-hmm. that kind of made some of his generals distant some of them yeah. would remain loyal to him and eventually those generals would win out in the civil war that happens but mm-hmm. uh like this was this was what the original conflict was it's fine if they took bit away with that and instead they brought in this conflict because uh it's the story of a black samurai and they want to portray the slave thing that oh mm-hmm. he is technically a servant a lord like you should not be that and nobunaga is like i don't care mm-hmm. he actually did not care he would at one point wear western clothes like the ones that portuguese yeah, used I... to wear that so makes sense you know so, he wants so uh, he yeah he he was a very change minded person he was very open to change too open to change according to well some people's complaints yeah. but like uh you can i think they can keep the same conflicts they can keep the magic heck they can even keep the robots i like i like that just give me the original story of yasuke please don't give them as flashbacks i want i wanted more content on that it yeah. would have been more like it would have felt more emotional yes that is what you Emotion. were trying to say and i agree with that I, that yes. when you see him rise from literally the bottom ground the dirt into yes. the palaces of kyoto where nobunaga mm-hmm. ruled from uh yeah. that was his like you know that was yasuke's story it would have been interesting to see that uh they did not show a lot of that they just sh- short snippets of it is what i yeah. disagree with but yeah um there's one more point you made about the story mainly being about yasan and yasuke and i think this is just the tldr of everything that we just spoke about this was yes, a story about yasan it's not a story yasan about yasan and saki and saki and saki it's like they took the word yasuke and they're like let's cut it in half and then <laughs> a little more letters we have yasan and saki and she it's, it felt like she was sort of the protagonist you know I and mean, that yasan was a supporting character it felt like that to me at times not all the time of course but ever since she came I in i mean i mean like, here here sake, this sake, is sake. Wh- this is where uh, it's the kind of argument that frodo wasn't the main character in lord of the rings it was actually samwise gad gamji which is technically according to tolkien he said he is actually the main hero yeah. but at the same time frodo is very very central to the story so yeah the movie portray him but like you know I, I, this the, this is really really in deep i don't really much uh, want to care about that even though what you say does make sense um mm-hmm. in short i would have loved to see at least four episodes of uh, yasuke before i got yes. into the yasan part of it uh I everything agree. else i'm i'm cool with it i do deduct numbers but i deducted only one mark for that the whole magic and fantasy and all that but i take it as personal preference if people like seeing magic flying on their screens in anime fine uh i don't i don't mind either way so long as okay. it gets you interested enough to do your own little research mm-hmm. it's fine by me because um that is how that is how i got into history you see um yeah the reason i got into history is because i played a bunch of video games and they weren't exactly accurate they were like call of duty age of empires age of empires is not historically accurate at all as much as you at want all. to yeah it's not <laughs> it it so totally is not it takes a lot of liberties but that is what got me interested in the subject and 
to get the actual story of yasuke there are so many youtube videos heck you know what i will link one youtube video from my favorite channel in the description below so do watch that they make fantastic historical videos so if you want the actual story of yasuke go watch that video but uh mubarak i think that's it that's all i have to say yep. about this show all right um i guess we should start wrapping up here we've yep. both said our points you are standing at an 8 i am standing at a 6 um any word, last words anything you'd like to say i think that uh, we should hold off on giving it a final score because it's just the two of us and there are still some people left and even in our crew who have yet to watch it specifically looking mm-hmm. at a person who has a thesis to complete before he gets back to us yep we're looking at you person <laughs> yep <laughs> so yeah all right. that's all yep um i hope you liked watching our review on this and this history lesson much uh interesting history lesson i have i've learned a lot today and i hope you all have too uh let us know in the comments below what you think we will have that link uh amir talked about in the description below and um like always stay safe um make sure to like and subscribe if you haven't already hit that bell icon too and i guess this is it we're out yep draw your sword let's fight fight me yes yes okay oh my god man that, the fight was amazing oh there is one yeah. thing that i absolutely forgot to fan girl about and i want to leave that as a last note yeah. did you the final fight when you get to it did you see him in that white suit of armor that reminded Ooh. me of that episode in samurai jack people who have seen samurai jack will know which one i'm talking about the one in which our samurai jack wears or actually his father wears a white suit of armor to fight aku with his sword of purity but yeah all right see you all later see ya